welcome. Don't adjust your dial. Welcome everyone to the Low Fi Poly Sci Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi as in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be, global news show. And here we're going to talk about our famous question, what's going on in the world today? And straight to it, the news, fresh off that press. And let's start off with an update in Tunisia, the once shining star of democratization of the Arab Spring. But now a lot of question marks since the president ousted parliament. First off, he made an announcement this week. And the first one, starting sometime next year, he's going to have consultation with the people of Tunisia. And some of it's going to be online. The second thing. In July, he's going to have a national referendum based on that consultation. So, really, we're not sure what that referendum is going to be about. And third, he claims elections will formally take place at the end of 2022, on December 17th. And until then, he's staying in power. He's controlling the country, and Parliament remains suspended. People, this is a classic example of a president turning into a dictator. Now, that being said, could we be wrong? Sure, we could be. It could be next year, December 17th, new parliament is elected and he leaves power. Yeah, that could happen. I guess we'll have to wait a year to find out. But really, democracy in Tunisia? It's left the building. And now, there is no successful case of democracy for the people of any Arab Spring country that actually overthrew their authoritarian government. And, you know, I'm very curious about this online consultation with the people of Tunisia that the president's planning. I can't wait to see how this turns out, or if it even turns out to be anything at all. Digital democracy. Sure, we'll see how that goes. Now let's move on over to Europe and the country of Romania. And this week, a judge was removed from office for posting two TikTok videos. Oh, TikTok, always getting people in trouble. But the Superior Council of Magistrates claimed the videos damaged the judiciary of the country's image. And, well, we can't have that now, can we? Uh -uh Uh-uh-uh. And what were these two videos of, you may be asking? Was this judge twerking on his TikTok? Was he tweaking to some tunes? What in the world was he doing on TikTok? Well, he says in one of them he was trimming his plants in his yard. And in another, he was cleaning his swimming pool. And neither one of them had anything to do with being a judge. So, you tell me, Lo-Fi Nation, what's this really about? Could it be this judge is a reformist of the current Romanian judiciary? Meaning he thinks that there are changes that need to be made? And this is all just a way of moving him out of the political picture? Question mark? I don't know. Correlation isn't causation. And there's still a lot of question marks surrounding this situation. And the decision is going to be appealed for sure. So we'll keep you updated going forward. Now for our weekly Wednesday segment of Lo-Fi Global Trivia. Oh yeah. And today, the Planet Earth Edition. And question number one. What's the largest animal on the planet? And five, four, three, two, and one. The blue whale they can sometimes get up to 90 feet long. Simply put, that's fucking massive. I mean, really, I love the blue whale. Favorite animal, well, almost favorite. We'll put them number two, tied for number two. We won't say what the others are. Question number two. What hemisphere is the Tropic of Capricorn in? The northern or the southern hemisphere? And five, four, three, two, one. The Tropic of Capricorn is in? The Southern Hemisphere, though admittedly, I still have no clue what that is all about. The Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, what what do they do? I don't know, I don't know. And question number three, more about imaginary lines. In what direction does the prime meridian run? Vertically or horizontal? And five, four, three, two, one. Our answer, the prime meridian runs vertically along the earth. And I think I used to know what the prime meridian was for, but I think I deleted it from my CPU to make room for what's going on in the world today. And question number four, how long does it take the earth to orbit the sun? 
Oh, now I know you're thinking, easy, easy, I got this. Well, we'll see about that. And five, four, three, two, one. Survey says, about 365 days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what our calendar year is about. Or really, 365 and a quarter, because you know that whole leap year thing. And BTW, February 29, my favorite day of the year. I celebrate it every year, not just every four. Now you know. And our final question out there, number five. How old is the planet? Wow, do you know this one? Do you, do you, do you? And five, four, three, two, one. Answer, 4.5 billion years old. Pretty old, eh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right in, let us know. How'd you do today? Did you go five for five out there? We certainly hope so. And now, switching gears and heading to Hong Kong and an update on the trial of media owner and democracy activist Jimmy Lay. He's been arrested so many times and in and out of court so many times that honestly, we've lost count. But today, he was sentenced to 13 months, just over one year in prison, for taking part in a Tiananmen Square massacre vigil that Hong Kong has been celebrating for years since the massacre took place in Beijing in 1989. I mean, what can we say about Hong Kong that we haven't already said? The autonomy and the freedom and democracy that they once had and that was protected under an agreement between the British government and the Chinese government at the end of colonization in 1997? Well, all of that was out the window. You know, people can say what they will about Hong Kong being an autonomous region of China. And while that used to be true, that's no longer true. Hong Kong's part of China period. And we'll keep following events there as it relates to other pro-democracy activists that are still in jail there waiting a trial. But don't expect any better outcome for any of them than what we saw here for Jimmy Lay. Now let's move a bit east and back toward Europe and the country of Moldova. So Moldova is a former Soviet Union country for all of us who don't know, but it became an independent state with the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s. And since then, like many former Soviet states, there's been the option of joining the European Union, you know? A complete shift of politics and economics from its past, a changing of identity. And in an interview with Reuters that the president of Moldova was in, she point blank says, Moldova wants to join the EU. And Russia, it's their choice. Now, this is important for a lot of different reasons. You know, Russia has been flexing its muscle all around, influencing former Soviet states and trying to influence politics in Europe. I mean, look at Ukraine and Russia annexing Crimea and Russia also helping to fuel the Ukrainian civil war in eastern Ukraine or helping Belarus. And Belarus is having issues with Poland on their border with immigrants that Belarus has been trying to funnel into the EU through Poland or the manipulation of natural gas prices to Europe. And in fact, this is a major concern for Moldova as well, as the president even alluded to the fact that there is concern that Russia could try manipulating natural gas prices to the country as a way of punishing them for moving toward the European Union. But I think it's pretty amazing for a country to say, hey, we're independent and we want to move this way. We'll definitely be watching this situation closely to see how exactly Russia does respond to all this, or if they even respond at all. And we'll keep you updated for sure. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. Roomba, anyone? You know, Congolese Roomba, music and dancing? Anyone want a Roomba? Well, this ancient cultural tradition has officially received United Nations protected status from UNESCO and it's being put on the list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. And personally, I think this is so cool. I mean, really, music and dancing are such a part of who we are as human beings. You know, I once spent about a week trying to figure out what's the oldest music we have known to humans today. And I won't spoil it for you either, but check it out. See what the oldest song is that we know of today. It's really interesting. And better yet, and one I haven't researched, what's the oldest dance moves 
that we know of as human beings today. I think that's a pretty interesting thought. Am I right? Am I right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oldest dance steps? Wonder what it is. Wonder where it's from. But not only do I think it's cool that UNESCO recognizes and protected African music and dance. Of course, that's awesome. I think it's cool that we are realizing saving our music and dance is important at all, though. I mean, I always listen to music. And hell, I mean, I make all the music for the podcast. I love, love music. And dancing? Well, who knows if this poli sci nerd has any moves. I mean, good thing we're a podcast and not a video-based show. Otherwise, you may just find out how even nerds got moves. Congratulations to the Democratic Republic of Congo and Congo Brazzaville for getting your applications accepted and for protecting an important piece of humanity, Congolese Rumpa. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Tune in tomorrow for episode 400 of Lo-Fi Poli Sci. And are you interested in writing into the show? Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, myself on LinkedIn, email us, let your voice be heard. Always remember that Lo-Fi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off. Tomorrow, episode 400. Tune in.